it's been a it's been a very long time. Do I even remember how to freaking do this? <laughs> maybe, maybe. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Cantina here on the Genreverse Podcast Network and Genreverse YouTube channel. It's available wherever you get your YouTube channels from. Well, there's only really one source YouTube, but hey, the podcast is available on all sorts of apps like Spotify, Apple's, Google, while well, Google's going to YouTube. So basically, guys, watch us on YouTube, but hey, check out other things like lrmonline.com, which should be your one-stop shop for all entertainment news. Uh, celebrity interviews, we cover anything and everything. There's red carpet events coming from Gig and Nancy as well. Lots of great stuff. I mentioned the YouTube channel, a lot of anime content. As the podcasts have been light, uh, but that changes today, ladies and gentlemen. The cantina is back, um, and of course, hey, we do have some merch uh, that is when dark mode's not on, uh, available at our uh, Red Bubble link in the description box down below. I'm Kyle, joined by the full crew here at the cantina, the full staff, uh, Cam Clark and Shocky. How's it going, guys? I feel like we haven't. I see Cam all the time because of watch more football, genreverse sports. Go subscribe, guys. But Shocky, how have you been, man? Doing good. Good. Uh, for those following the website, you guys know that there's been a, a new look to it in the past couple of weeks. That's basically what I've been working on is trying to update the back end so that we are in compliance with all the Google bylaws and stuff to make it so that our website stays you know, near the top of the search results. So that's where probably the past month, month and a half I've been doing. Awesome stuff. You guys check out LRM online. Definitely. Cam, how, how have you been, man? I haven't actually seen you in a, in a, in almost two weeks. Cause you took a, a week off from the football thing. Yeah. And I was sick as well. Um, so I'm starting to feel a bit better now, but yeah, yeah, good. That's good. Yeah, that's good. A uh, little bit of a new look here on the cantina as well. Uh, you get to see us more, which is kind of unfortunate now that I now that I think about it. But hey, guys, we got a new uh, Star Wars show coming out. Uh, the Acolyte. The Acolyte is hitting possibly tonight, according to some rumors. But uh, at least on uh, at least on uh, tomorrow uh, at at midnight. Um, <sighs> news i guess acolyte news first so before we kind of get into our thoughts sure. theories and stuff um cam you you write most of the star wars news at lrmonline.com mm -hmm. uh we've we've had a bunch of stuff kind of confirmed some footage um episode titles released uh tell me about twins star wars is always big on twins what what do we know about twins yeah well there was a, a rumor that we discussed on the cantina you know, a long time ago now that um that, um Amanda Stenberg was playing twins in the show, and that's now been confirmed by Stenberg herself. Um, she's playing twins called May and Osha. Uh, I'm not going to pronounce the surname, uh, but we were given a surname as well. I don't know if you can bring that up and try and pronounce it yourself. Yeah, uh, and Anisaya or something. Anisaya, maybe? maybe something, something like, like that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but what is interesting about that as well is that um, Jodie Turner-Smith's character is called Mother and Sayaya or whatever it is. Um, so we can, I think, there's a familial connection between between her and uh, both me and Osha. It seems as if Osha is, a, from what we can see, a little bit of the trailer, is a former... Jedi apprentice uh, Padawan of Master, what's his name, Master Saul, um, that's played by um, Lee Young Yai. Um, and obviously, I think the character that we see most of in the trailers is actually the May character. Mm. That's the one that seems to be the Sith acolyte um, in the show. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of, we know about it at the moment, I think. Uh, the episode titles. Was there anything uh, interesting in the in the episode titles? Anything that caught your your eye? And I've I've not seen the episode titles um, so was far. That what's not? The oh, one directors. I covered was directors. It was yeah. directors, directors and writers. For each and writers. That's my fault, um, guys. That's my fault. Um, was there any any uh, directors to be excited about, Cam? How about that? Uh, no, I mean Leslie Headland directed the first two episodes, the this mm -hmm. pre the, this two episode premiere that we're going to see. That was the only two that she directed um, in the eight episode series. Is it eight or ten? 
Nah. Eight. Eight. Right. Um, and um, um, but I, I didn't really recognise any of the other names on there, or really for the writers either, to be fair. But um, but that's not that unusual for you know. Yeah. No. And I no, I, I wish they would go back to more unknown names in these in these shows in general. Seeing so many big names, especially cameos, just. It it connects it to Earth too much, you know what I'm you know what I'm saying, and I I hate that. Star Wars should be escapism. Um, cool. yeah, well, this one shouldn't have too much cameos. That's one thing we have yeah, here. Feel like that's one good thing. That any cameos that will be in it should be. I mean, I think we're getting Venestra Low, you know, was in it. Uh, she's the only High Republic character um, that's really in it because she's very long lived, so she's kind of still. Yeah. Around at this point, where this she's just a youngster in the High Republic the, uh, novels. High Republic, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. It's that it's that transition period from the High Republic into the kind of fall of the Republic period. Um, she has also confirmed that there's no Yoda in this. At right. All. Good. Good. Although it is going to seem kind of weird. That that's one of those where I'm glad he's not in there, but it's also going to be kind of weird that he's not in there because you have this huge jedi situation and i mean it's it's yoda right he's, if he's, they, is he grand master by this time 100 years the, prior i mean you would imagine he's on the jedi council if he's not yeah. uh you know leading it that he's on it um, and yeah. but it may just be that we don't see the jedi council so much that you could know be, we're that dealing could be right true. Yeah. the next level below that um whether that would stay, I mean, we don't know whether the Acolyte will get any further seasons. Um, yeah. It depends how it obviously performs, but, you know, it would be weird if it ended up with three or four seasons and we never saw Yoda at all, you know, um, at that point. But um, but I think it's it's good at the moment that we're, we're not getting him because I think it would be too much of a focus distraction type thing. Yeah, um, definitely. For this show, be. which is supposed to be something different and take us to a new era. So, you know, having Yoda show up would just be a bit too familiar. You know, bring, bring back the uh, puppet versus CGI, CGI oh discussion. <laughs> um. How about over on on the uh, more like rumors and and uh, hubbub and and whatnot, leading us into a, a discussion about our our thoughts and theories for this? Shocky, what what other things uh, might we know? Might we not know? Kind of in that 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 field house. Sorry, I don't know. Professional. Um, <laughs> what I'm trying to think is so this show's di- taking a different approach with its pr uh status it's, it, they've put a lot out there i think in my in, compared to the other series that have come beforehand I, it's de- i mean they gave a bunch of uh podcasters and star wars news specialist people you know early access to the first four episodes and everything and it seems like overall it's been good publicity wise um but trying to think that you know rumors or anything that were uh, nothing too crazy. I know that the, the big hubbub for a while there was the lightsaber whip um, <laughs> and whether like yeah. and it was for a day there was it a whip or was it not? And then Leslie Headland came in and said, "Yeah, it's a whip and stuff." So as uh, an as an EU guy, I'll say that I thought Lumia's light whip was stupid in the EU. So I yeah. I think it's stupid here in 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 reality and. I, I know she mentioned we'll a. To see how it looks, you know. I, I don't even like the idea at all. Um, it bends, we'll like anyways. Yeah. Um, she also said that there's some other fancy lightsaber in this yep. that the mm-hmm. prop department was uh, bugged out about, and uh, I don't know stuff like that kind of worries me. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, think about it. You know, we went from the original trilogy, which is traditional lightsabers, and then the prequels introduced the double bladed lightsaber. Which is, I I can see that. Yeah, Yeah, that one's understandable. But the sequel trilogy gave us the the spinning stuff and the well, yeah, the the Inquisitors, yeah, ones that they used. That's got to be the worst. Which I hated. Yeah, Yeah. I think I think that's universally amongst all Star Wars fans like the least liked lightsaber, the Inquisitors uh, Mm -hmm. lightsaber. Um, You know, and then the cross guard with Kylo Ren that kind of opened up the door for different variations of lightsaber like that, stuff, you so. know i just thought you know why yeah. why would you need that just you know no, yeah. jj yeah. abrams just chose that because he thought it looked cool 
you know, which I'm like, hmm. I mean, it, it it did look all right, but it yeah. was also one of those where you're just like, I don't, I don't buy it. Like, no, um, almost getting too almost that was almost too cartoony. It was okay, but it yeah, was it was, okay. it was it butted up against it. Um, uh, freaking Ray's uh, ghost, you know, force. Vision, oh, the force vision unfolding one yeah. was stupid like that was like the double bladed did, did you, but it retract it, like it folded it folded in yeah. half and it's like is that is that so you can fit it in luggage easier maybe yeah <laughs> um one of the things you you mentioned uh about publicity and stuff and and uh you know we had rumors going up all over right you know next to release date uh release date but you had mentioned um the publicity being weird around this one almost almost like there was publicity but there also wasn't this has been one of the most like quiet type right before releases that i can remember in a in a while and there's there's almost like this um it almost feels like there's this this hush amongst the crowd as they're they're waiting to see is is it any any good i know i'm in that that crowd where i'm a, a bit worried about it um i want it to be good i really really want it to be good there's only been one thing since the end of mando season two uh, minus a couple of episodes in 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 uh uh boba fett um but there's only been one thing that i've really actually in, enjoyed since mando season two and that's andor and everything else has been various levels of of disappointment or bad just outright right bad kenobi um Boba Fett. Uh, why, why do you think things feel weird on on this one, man? And and am I wrong? Do they not feel weird? Like does does not this? No, you're you're on. Feel like weird? I'm. So I've been waiting for this this series for a while now. Like you go back to like some of the videos we made like way back in COVID and when they announced the series. I, I was kind of hyping this one up like as the one that I was like, you know, pretty most excited for. But you're right. Like the publicity for it. You know when you get that, you know we've gotten those movies before where it's you know they they allow certain um, certain podcasters and certain YouTubers to watch it and give those like thumbs up, greatest show ever, and everything. And yeah. it turns out to be complete garbage. And Stephen stuff. King talks about the the Flash movie being the greatest thing since sliced bread. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like that's my biggest fear right now. The more. Uh, the more Twitter X, formerly known as Twitter posts, I see YouTube videos, I see of these, you know, podcasters you know, like praising it and stuff. It, it's it's scaring me a little bit because I, like I know why they're doing this. I know why they're picking these individuals out because they know that they're going to come up and they get the they get the to go and watch in the theaters. They got they did that. What was it? That round table with. Um, at Lucasfilm, um, mm -hmm. where they invited everyone and stuff. I get it. it like, listen, you know, it, you want it to be good, and you're 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 looking through it in, you know, colored lenses. To you know, the best way I can say is that, and stuff. So, I like when it's ever this type of publicity, I'm always scared. You know, um, I, I want it to be good. Yeah, I really I mean, do. I yeah. get that because I think. You know, what quite often what we see with these social media reactions is that nobody's negative, and then come review time when the actual, you know, trades and outlets get a hold of it and review it, it's like me, average C or whatever, you know, and you know that's that that's happened quite a lot, right? We we a lot of these Disney Plus series. I hope it doesn't happen with the acolyte because it's good, but you know, there's always that trepidation, I think. Um, you know, with, with, uh, with things being as rough as, as they have been, um, if this isn't good, like, cause I, I don't want to hate star Wars. <laughs> like I ended up hating Marvel. Um, but if this isn't good for me, it's like, I'll watch Andor. I'm not going to watch Skeleton Crew, shy of like Cam coming up and being like, oh my God, Kyle, this is the greatest thing ever. It is, it is, it is the best thing since Rogue One, best thing since the, uh, uh, um, Imperial planet scene with Mando and, and, uh, um, freaking what's his name? The comedian's character. I'm forgetting it at the time. Bill Burr. Right now. Oh, well. Uh, Bill Burr's character. Yeah. Uh, short of that, 
I I don't I don't even care at all for for that one. But Cam, if this is another disappointing series, man, how how are you handling that? Like as someone with kids and responsibilities and limited time, like do you see a time where you don't even want to necessarily watch and review a Star Wars show? Maybe, maybe. I mean, there's a few of them that have come out that I kind of wish I could move from my brain. Um, you know, so movies right. and um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, for sure. Um, so you know, and and whenever they, they do something that's that's not very good, it just dilutes the brand, it dilutes the franchise even more, and it just makes it ah. Uh, average franchise instead of a kind of special franchise which it used to be at the same time i think they've got an uphill battle with this one because we've got that whole political crowd the uh, sometimes called the fandom menace but it doesn't it's mm -hmm. not just star wars now it's happening with all franchises mm -hmm. and it's like there's this misogyny and then they are the misogynists you know um you know no more girl bosses. Give us white men back on the screen and stuff like that. And you know, I'm not any all, all of that crap. It's like if a story's good, a story's good. And this one is fighting uphill because it's got a female lead star and a female showrunner, and they don't like that. You know, so they've been having a go at. There's a certain crowd that are determined this will be terrible before yeah. they, they've ever seen a, a bit of footage from it. And even when the trailer came out, and I would say I don't know what your opinion is, but I think the trailers trailers can be done in any way but i think the trailers look interesting to me anyway i agree with you on that like an interesting show overall um, some of the actual look, look, I, looks weird but that's different i like the what was it the the clip that was just released this past week with uh master yeah, low and, and stuff that like where the it's it's kind of that western fighting feel you know samurai look to it and stuff i like that aspect of it I don't like the I don't like the karate fighting Jedi. I really don't. <laughs> it's a different take on it. It's okay. I don't like I, it. No, I don't. I don't. Um, I don't like every Jedi fighting they, like their samurai. They, they explained like, that is that in this era the Jedi are so well known and so powerful that they don't always need to get their lightsabers out to deal with yeah. situations. I, I you understand. Know what I, mean? that, I understand. That kind of thing, but but um, it's also yeah. it it's also one of those things where I just I don't. Um, when, when Jedi would go martial, <laughs> martial arts, it was, it was very limited and, and I don't know, I, I like the aspect of the Jedi, the, the night aspect of the Jedi, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I like that. And while it's okay to throw a punch, a kick, which Knights surely did, I like, I like that. And this is again, one of those things where it's like. Martial arts are cool. Jedi should do, and I, and I I don't know. I don't think every Jedi is doing it and stuff. But I think like yeah. Master Lo is the, like the only one that we've seen so far. I think. Well, we see another, more, um, you know, another there's different variations of the fighting, yeah. right? But the other well, aspect character seems to be very much user hands, um, but then yeah. we see we, well, that's one of the clips where we've seen where like she's she's fighting hand to hand against me. Yeah, but she brings her lightsaber out when she realizes okay, I'm not winning this as easily yep. as I normally do and that's when the lightsabers come out kind of thing so you know you can kind of see that but one of one of the yeah. other things about it again I don't like to be reminded of Earth and the way they filmed it is a very clear stylist yeah, <laughs> stylistic way of filming martial arts battles here for for martial arts movies um, it looks like it could have easily been yeah. you know a scene from any martial arts movie hollywood hollywood makes so Definitely. it's it's, it's a layered thing from that for sure yeah. Yeah. yeah um i don't know what about you shocky what if it sucks man like <laughs> famous you guys seen fan yeah, fanboys I mean, right <laughs> i listen, love that scene at the end of fanboys what if it sucks what if it sucks yeah i remember that movie that was great um yeah you know like so next up is skeleton crew i probably won't watch that one or if i do i'll wait for it to come all the way like you know release the entire season and then stream it and stop it wherever i want to instead of trying to you know wait up till midnight every night or stuff you know watching it on screen um i don't know i'm keeping my expectations low with acolyte I, I see the publicity i've you know i've heard all you know what all these people have seen the first four episodes have said and how exciting it is 
I like the way that Leslie Headland has taken the the PR approach um, and kind of been a little bit more upfront of how she feels about things. Because like Cam's point, where like the fandom menace that she realizes that there is that crew out there, but she doesn't acknowledge him. She realizes that there's fans of Star Wars that are you know critical of Star Wars because of their love for it. You know, like I, I don't consider us in the fandom menace. I, you know, everything comes out sucks and stuff we have what we like we we know what we like um and and we're we critique things that aren't like you know having the jack black is if in star we wars don't like something that we say we don't like it but yeah. it's not because it's a female character or because it's a female director you know like it's right right like, yeah of course yeah we've I mean, praised bryce dallas howard for some great direction yeah. work but we've also slated deborah chow for what she did in, in obi yeah, and obi and yeah. I have no oh, problem man, with the female the lead or anything like that. Cho, you know. Yeah. And we were we were always the ones being like, Kathleen ain't going nowhere. God, we wish yeah, she yeah, would, right, right, but yeah. she's not going anywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think stayed. she's been that great, but oh. yeah. The, no, the, she's been awful. Happening. I don't Although, know how she still has a job, might, but she does. We might be nearing the end of that now. I, I yeah. mean, I, I do think we could maybe once this contract Indy is out. This is out. Next contract, I think that'll be it. Yeah, so to... agree. So you, you back to your question is if this isn't good, you know, where do I go from Star Wars? I mean, Skeleton Crew is a wash, and then I think it's just waiting around to see, you know, the Grogu Amando movie. Um, I don't and know if I go season two. I mean, you know, and or season two is is you know a little bit of ways, but yeah, I mean, you, you're looking at that. I'll watch that. Um, but yeah, it, it's to the point where you know the excitement for Star Wars is has definitely gone down and you know we got star wars outlaws will be coming out soon and stuff we'll see how that plays out and stuff but uh, um the yeah. the shooter the 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 um one that you said would never see the light of day is actually oh see yeah the light it's kinda, of day. yeah it's, it, it's sooner rather than later right i mean yeah. geez. Um, <laughs> hunters yeah. or whatever it's called yeah star wars yeah. hunters yeah yeah that's all we need uh, and that's all new characters as well so we'll see how it plays out um any any theories on where this show goes what's what's going to be the the end game is this really truly a kind of solo one-off story set in a galaxy far far away or do you think it will connect somehow more into the the fall of the jedi in the uh next hundred years after what, what do you think cam well i think it won't in this series uh, i don't think I think the way the showrunner has been talking about it, this series kind of has a start, a beginning, and an end to yeah. it. But that doesn't mean she doesn't have ideas of where they could go if it got a season two and expand the story further. So it's possible we could start pushing into that if it's successful and it gets maybe two or three more seasons. But I, I don't think that's something that we'll see too much of uh, in this. Uh, um, but I think we will explore the Sith in there point of view a little bit more in this than we have elsewhere um and i also think that i don't know if we'll ever get to see in this series in season one the actual sith lord like the the master because i think it's the apprentice that we're seeing that's then recruiting an acolyte you know to to do their what kind of like dooku getting ventress and you know anakin trying to recruit luke or going for what's his name from the force unleashed if you consider that yeah. canon i don't know if it is or not but um you know that kind of deal Star is it, I think what we're seeing here yeah yeah um but you know there's potential that we could that we could lead up to that further down the line i don't know it's hard to say do you think they use plagueis in in this allude to him do you think he's the big shadowy figure between now and and you know, Palpatine, Palpatine, well, we're Palpatine. We're 100 Palpatine. years before the Phantom Menace mm. at the moment. I, I don't would know imagine how, how that old Plagueis, Plagueis could be. would be the, the Sith Lord at this time. Mm -hmm. If, if uh, that would make sense to me, rather than that he comes along later as an apprentice and then becomes the Sith Lord, it would make more sense to me that Plagueis is the Sith Lord. Whoever is his apprentice at the moment, will not be in the future for whatever reason you know you can read into that you know that he kills them or whatever but, and that's when he goes and gets palpatine i don't know if we'll actually get to that point because that would be you know palpatine's let's say in his 50s or 
sixties or something yeah. in the Phantom Menace. I don't know, but you know, so that would be like forty years away, you know, before we kind of get to that point. I don't think we would get to that in this series, but I wouldn't be a miss to us eventually meeting the master and it turning out to be Darth Plagueis. No, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be against that at all. What about you, Shaki? You think Pl- uh, Plagueis is the the Big in-game? bad in the back? Yeah, I mean, it's if it's some at some point in time, if you carry this season, you know, the series out a couple of seasons, it's got to get to Plagueis. I mean, I think you know it's going to work itself. Like if this is if this series does well, is really you know widely you know loved among Star Wars fan. Yeah, it's going to get picked up for another season or two, and then and that's. I mean, you, you you eventually hit a brick wall with, you know, Darth Sidious, you know, Palpatine and stuff. So you got to get to that point and you, you're giving yourself at least a, a buffer. Yeah. Uh, you know, of 100 years. And like some some of the things that you've listened to the uh, interviews with Leslie Headland is like she's always uh, wanted to, you know, doing Star Wars, wanted to focus on the Sith and the, the rule of two and seeing how like the the apprentice is always you know trying to come up with a way to take out the master because they're striving for that power so it could be like a couple you know yeah. changes of power until you get to place may not just be like a one two all right it, you know play against yeah, that deal. it yeah. could be you know that she has in her mind like four or five different changes of power you know and stuff it could be uh more Checkers and chess mate. Plague, you know, Plagueis you know. could be May's apprentice at some point. You know, May ends up becoming the master in the future yeah. and Plagueis kills her. And, and, you know, we just don't know. I don't think that yeah. is what will happen, but, um, but it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, any other theories or thoughts, guys, on, on the Acolyte before it hits today, tomorrow, sometime? Will we hear the word midichlorian? Oh, God. Uh, probably. Oh, yeah. Probably they just it. call it M count. M count. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Which the bad batch and it you didn't know. seem to go off. Nobody got annoyed at that. But, uh, you know. And they're going to sit next to each other. The Jedis are going to sit next to each other, like, on the you know, table. Now, what's your M count? You know. What's your M count? Yeah. You know. uh, uh, the EU essentially ignored it. And it worked fine yeah. without ever having to acknowledge it. So why why can't we just do that? <laughs> if I ever well, a, a, I'm I gonna just throw it in there. Just oh god, it is a way of time. seeing why some characters are more powerful than others. It's more like they've got the potential. So it's like if we compare two sides of the coin or the complete opposite sides of the coin, you've got Sabine, you know, Uti Ahsoka who seems to have an affinity for the force but it's very very small yeah. uh-huh. compared to let's ray yeah. who's a clone of palpatine and has this really high m um, count and anakin who yep. is higher than anybody else you, you know, know and they're just the beans never going to beat those two you know so that's never going to happen you know she's not going to be powerful enough for that there's there's this great thing and and um this genre you might know it a bit cam it's called a fantasy right and they got this these magic systems and and these fantasy uh books and movies and and series and um mana is a thing and there's an m m word there uh mana then maybe it's your pool of mana the amount of mana you can draw in might make you you know more apt or more powerful in in casting magic which is fine because it's freaking mystical but it's not freaking bacteria in your blood talking to you (laughs) So you don't need yeah. it to be some you know. sort of sentience. Ah, oh, God, I hate you, George. In fantasy, I hate people you. don't understand what I hate you. Microscopic organisms are and stuff like that. But this you is an need, advanced you you scientific need, it's world. Mystical. It's mystical. FTL. It's mystical. And, just look, just look what happens when I just mention the word midichlorian and see where it the, didn't, the, it the didn't rabbit hole it. would tell. Yep. George is George is a dick for that one. <laughs> that one and 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 insisting. Insisting that the original trilogy was was for twelve years. It was all ages, George, not just twelve year olds. The freaking teddy bears weren't even for twelve year olds. I just think he didn't do it very well. But I can I get why he introduced it because he needed a way to yeah. show why the the Anakin had the potential the one. above anybody else. The chosen you know? one. Well, and the force the is just one. that way. Well, it doesn't I, why need is he the chosen one? Well, something that you can analyze. Hey, listen. I think he's 
you know. Yeah, the immaculate birth. I mean, oh, no one asked about Jesus' midichlorian count. <laughs> and so it was the immaculate no, birth. No one, that that Jesus was the son of well, God. I mean, why I'm, can't I'm, we just There's a lot of people there that you know, believe that. Sensible people like me think there's no way Jesus was actually virgin births don't happen, you know. So I think most people when oh. Shmi Smy Walker says, Oh, there was no father, would just go, Yeah, hen, okay, yeah, you know, okay, you just don't want to tell us about it. But there was a dad, you got nasty with somebody, this is the result, you know. Um, that would just be the logical thing to think. So, so they needed something See, else to yeah. show it's because of people like you we need to know jesus is midichlorian count didn't, so didn't, you can be didn't, a believer. Didn't. you know what the you I know what, what the midi do you know what midichlorians are cam that was like back when when kevin feige before dr strange was was actually made when he was like dr Strange's going to use magic but it's going to have scientific explanations and everyone was like no why he casts it's spells magic. and and what did they end up going with it's 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 Freaking magic. How does Doc Strange do shit? He casts spells. How do you use the force? You just do. Period. <laughs> I hate you, George. Oh. Anyways. <sighs> uh, the one rumor I would say uh, that we have heard is that, that I don't know whether it's a red herring, but there's a lot of people think that Manny Jacinto's character is going to end up being this the Sith Apprentice, the one we see in the mask with the mm -hmm. modulated voice mm -hmm. in the latest trailer, um, who's clearly the one who's set me in motion, if we like, um, and that we're going to see him in the mask, but we're also going to see him in his day job, you know, and not really realise who it is. If that's the case, everybody's kind of worked it out a little bit too quickly. But I think th that could be a bit of red herring, you know, and actually there's something else going on. I guess we'll just have to wait and see how, the, how it plays out in the story. Indeed. We'll be here. Um, we'll be reviewing it, so you guys will be able to catch a, uh, a review More for, for this tomorrow evening. Um, and uh, regardless, uh, at, at threat of... of, of uh, bodily, I'm joking about bodily harm. Uh, Cam and, and and Shaki will definitely be reviewing uh, reviewing this. Maybe we'll look at like the first episode of of uh, Skeleton Crew or something. I really don't want to. See the Max <laughs> Rebo thing oh, was just like, like oh my god. Yeah, Cam will be yeah. our 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 <laughs> litmus test. He'll yeah. he'll jump on that grenade. <laughs> All right, you guys. I'll just I'll just slap I go off in reviews and written reviews anyway. There you go. Uh, check out more content here on the Genreverse. We do uh, anime stuff, reviews, reactions, trailers, uh, podcasts covering all sorts of stuff, geek, pop, culture, entertainment, live streams, doing gaming. I've been playing CS2 a bit. I owe you guys some Final Fantasy again. Uh, LRMonline.com. Uh, uh, celebrity interviews, written articles, reviews, covering anything from comic book and sci-fi fantasy hoity-toity oscar bait movies um and merch we do have that linked down below shocky anything else you want to say uh no just uh let us know what we're doing right wrong in the comment section yep cam yep and if you interested in getting involved in lrm we're always looking for people that are willing to writers um come in you know what Whatever you're interested in, we, we we will give you a platform to write about it. If it's just covering news, if it's just opinions on entertainment, that's fine as well. Um, I'm getting old. I'm like the old Ben Kenobi. I need I need a new a young Luke Skywalker to come in and fresh freshen things up. If you are if you want to be the Luke Skywalker of LRM, please let us know, um, and we will pass on our knowledge to you and let you go. There you go. Uh, Kyle M at LRMonline.com, uh, Cam at LRMonline.com, or Michael at LRMonline.com. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you uh, tomorrow, hopefully, on the Acolyte Review. May the Force be with you.